Yeah, and, and Gary, you really kind of worked through the, uh, I would say, probably the golden age of of cartoons, of certainly Saturday morning cartoons, and you know the '80s, and uh, you know, you know the the time where there was just a bounty of children's television. I, I was curious about what some of your favorite roles, may, maybe not necessarily even even in cartoons, but but certainly those two. But some of your favorite roles through the years, uh, some of the things that that you know you kind of remember fondly. Um, I. I sort of liked playing He-Man, but He-Man was always so difficult because he was the straight guy. <laughs> so, you know, it was always, well, it's time to go now. Uh, come here, whatever your name is, uh, the Skeletor. <laughs> You're an evil, evil man, and I have to take care of you. You know, so <laughs> I was always, you know, that, that good guy. And then, um, then I moved on into, I think my fav- one of my favorite roles was the... Uh, character of king hippo and captain nintendo yes because he was so over the top and uh, mike donovan was playing the part of jake plant wizard and uh, i just went hey. it was just this big boisterous guy who i just it was just a fun fun character to play and uh over the years i guess uh the the character of scorby and uh, the fly two really stuck in me because it was like a really good bad guy and I just never got to play some bad guys and and then that one I did it was uh the first uh first feature film that I ever worked in as a as a lead role and that was back in 1988 or 89 I think my first uh, real meaty uh, like a good dramatic role with Vera Fawcett and Small Sacrifices that was a lot of fun then uh, Grounder in Sonic the Hedgehog was fun, and uh, and uh, Optimus Prime. I've always always uh, loved that role, even though he's kind of the straight guy too. But we all had some fun with it, and uh, I like that. Cold Squad, uh, one of my favorite television characters that I ever did. It was the only character I ever. I actually look. I really look forward to going to work every day. I'm saying, ah, I got to go to work. Damn! Yeah, ooh, it was uh, just a fun, fun character to play. And for all the sci-fi guys, Chekhov, he was great, but he was nothing enough. Yeah, I'm a big star myself. I loved that character. He was so fun, but they just never used him enough. Uh, but I died a glorious death, so I'm happy with that. And then, last but not least, I guess uh, more recently, uh, one of my favorites. Well, what what's going to be on my favorite, I think, <laughs> is uh, Scooby Doo Four, the beginning, uh, Vice Principal Grimes. Oh. That was a very very fun role. <laughs> You've been involved with Transformers since the early nineties. Did yeah. did you ever think when you're doing those first few commercials, fifteen or sixteen years ago, that you would yeah. end up having such a long association with the property? No, I never did because what's really funny is I used to do the commercials to the Transformers for uh, Generation 2. And I actually think I did a couple of commercials for Generation 1. Really? Way back when. Yeah, just like uh, toy commercials for TV. We go, Transformers, Generation 2, batteries not included. Oh. You know, get wow. the <laughs> figures from, you know. From was it Hasbro? I guess it was. Yeah. Yeah. New from Hasbro Transformers Generation Two. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it was. Uh, and then, and then the the cartoon uh, series uh, for uh, Beast Wars, um, or Beast Machines or whatever they call it, uh, came uh, came to fruition, and uh, I. Uh, went and read for the series. I didn't think much of it. You know, I just thought, you know, well, okay, it's great. It's cartoon, but I never realized how much of an impact it would have and how long it would be with it. It was, uh, it turned into be like a career, career, almost a career long association with the, with the character. It was tremendous. Well, seeing as you did both uh, voiced Optimus Primal and Optimus Prime, how would you say your role differed uh, between the two, uh, Gary? Well, um, the voice of Optimus Primal was, you know, he was a lot more, um, he was very warm and very, to my mind, very human. Um, he always had, uh, 
uh, what's the uh, the rapport with his with his uh, his gang, his crew. He was uh, he had a sense of humor and uh, he was always chiding Rat Trap and and looking after Cheetor and and conferring with Rhinox and he was always a, a, to my mind a good guy, kind of a well balanced guy. In the um, in the uh, Transformers Armada and and uh, and uh, Cybertron and that, I, those were more of like the Generation One, and it was more like Jetpack or Jetfire, come here, get these kids out of the way, we've got to go. You know, it was more hard than, more like the Peter, you know, oh my bad, more like the Peter Cullen way of uh, of uh, uh, doing the. Uh, the character <laughs> show me the spark give me the spark we're running out of time and i'm like yeah well i kind of like that but you know I, I i thought you know you guys i really like the way optimus prime sounds in beast machines sounds like a character it sounds like someone that you care about i just found that in those ones i uh I wasn't well. First off, I'm not happy with it because it's because it's not prelay. It's uh, it's dubbing from the Japanese, and you're dealing with a an artificial constraint there as you're as you're dubbing from Japanese into English. So it was a real challenge to come up with a with a character with you know that and trying to play the beats that aren't there. You know because in Japan, you know those those what kind of mashta kumbawa this. <laughs> you know, you're trying to fit Cheetor, come here right away, or, or Jetfire, come here right away. And, you know, you're trying to make those things match and uh, and sound like a character. So they, they sort of come across as a little clipped and constrained. And uh, that kind of bugged me because uh, there were a, there were a few comments, you know, that 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 some of the fans or non-fans in this case had uh, sort of laid into me about the the characters on 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 uh, Energon and uh, was it not robots in disguise? What was the other Armada? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was a bit pissed because I know the, you know the the characters in Beast Wars were to my mind a little bit better defined. So you mentioned talking about like Armada and talking about what's been called the Unicron trilogy, the Armada, Energon, and Cybertron. Were there scripting differences between those series that you noticed, or I mean, how did that come across from an acting standpoint? Well, as I said, you know the, the the scripts, the way the scripts were written. I you know I I have no complaints about the scripts. I enjoyed the scripts, but they again they have to adhere to a certain construct, and the Japanese language, the way it's polysyllabic, and to make those flaps match. They had to write the script around around all those vocal things. So a lot of times there would be uh, stuff, uh, way too much stuff said when there is not a, not a necessity for it, and not enough when there was. So so right. it uh, it it they always sound a little bizarre. You know, it's like reading a badly translated book. You know, or or uh, listening to. Or watching a movie, uh, a, a, a Chinese kung fu movie, and and uh, watching the lips move, and then watching the so you are a good kung fu fighter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, let me tell you what, my rice congee is stronger than you are, especially with the salted fish. And you go, what the hell does that mean? You know, right? You know, and then the lips are moving, and uh, there's nothing coming out, and. Uh, but uh, I, the, the storylines were fine. I mean, uh, as far as I was, as I could see, I thought they moved along. I wasn't too impressed with robots in disguise. I didn't think that was, you know, up there. 